Oh. All right, here we are. We're here. Um, what can I say? I'm nervous. I'm excited. I wore my achievement shirt in honor of Principal Figgins. Um, today is a big day. Um, and uh, as you guys know, I don't go live very often. I don't use social media very often, but the irony is um, I actually do better with live things, especially when I can check out my hair and print myself while I'm doing it. Um, I do better with live things, like live theater, live performances, uh, because if you screw up or you do something stupid, you just roll with it, as opposed to doing this and posting stuff. I just think about it too much and it never happens. So this is fun. Thank you for joining me. Um, today was a very uh, fun day of reflection of a lot of the time I've spent uh, with Glee and with Blaine and with you guys. Um, I've been doing a lot of photo cataloging and a lot of like uh, closet cleaning. And so I've been going through all this stuff. So it's been a very nostalgic time, which is why I really wanted to put this concert thing together that I, that I posted about, which I'm calling Deck Aid. It's a stupid pun. My initials are D-E-C. Darren Everett, Chris, and Aid because we were trying to raise money for a variety of good causes. Uh, because I've thrown this all together um, somewhat last minute. Um, you have to stay tuned for all the details. If you want to buy tickets and all that stuff, you can kind of be up to date on all the info uh, via the link uh, in my bio or by uh, darrenchriscom slash decade if you want the information on that. Um, it's been a pretty crazy past couple weeks. Uh, I've been able to exhale this week, um, so since things were really kind of touch and go, I'm sorry that we don't have all the tickets available like right now, which would be the smart thing to do. Um, but here's what we're going to do today in anticipation for that. Um, I hope many of you can join me for that. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot of Glee songs and Glee stories, and there's just so much ground to cover that I was like, you know what, let's just do something that I've wanted to do for a long time, which is just reacting to watching an episode I haven't watched forever, I have some notes here, um, but basically I didn't really prepare anything. I'm just gonna watch this. I don't really remember a lot about what happened during the show or what's going on with the characters and my reactions will probably, probably be less about what's going on in the show and more about uh, things that those moments remind me of, what I was doing that day or, or the moments leading up to the scenes that we shot. Um, but the point is there, I just figured I'd put it all out there while I watch this and if I forget to mention anything, I'll just do it during the live stream concert on Saturday, the 28th, Decade, which is just a big fundraiser to raise as much money as humanly possible for a bunch of great causes. Again, stay tuned. I would love if you could join me for that. So this is just kind of like a taster platter of what that's going to be like. But um, man, what a day. Okay, so November 9th is when the episode came out. But obviously we filmed this episode uh, before. It was like early, early October. Um, so the day that this came out, I think we were filming regionals. And I remember being in the audience watching, you know, the New Directions do their thing while I was following the reactions to this. And it was a very exciting time. This is the episode that I sing Teenage Dream. I've got a whole lot of backstory about that, about recording the studio, and there's a lot of fun stories behind that. Um, but I think we should probably just get into watching this. Uh, before we do, uh, let's talk about getting on the show. And I guess I'll get into more detail again during this, this show I'll we'll do in a couple weeks, live show. But um, there's sort of some misinformation about my audition process on the show. There was a MySpace like entry contest for, um, for being on Glee. And at the time I had gotten my first on-camera gig on this ABC show called Eastwick. And uh, my agents were like, you should, you should submit something for this MySpace concert that's dating itself. This MySpace, MySpace like contest to find people who could be on Glee, and they asked me to make a video for it. And I was like, I don't think it feels right because I'm like on TV. Clearly, everybody knows about Eastwick. Um, thinking that you know this contest was really meant for people that weren't necessarily in the in the industry, and I didn't want to make a video as and, and be like disrespectful to that sort of selection process. So anyway, after years go by, I think those videos, uh, it's like me singing, I think it's um, Lean On Me, was mistakenly taken from that contest as my audition for Glee. That was not my audition for Glee. It was not till maybe about a, maybe a year later. Uh, and I decided to cut my hair. 
I'll get into this later so we can just watch the episode, but it involved a haircut, a very fast and furious audition, and I was working on set within a week, having gone to New York and back to record a song and to shoot these scenes, which I'm gonna rewatch for the first time in 10 years. 10 years ago, I was at my friend's house and we had a big old party with friends and fam. I have videos from that as well that I'll, that I'll show as part of this concert. But uh, yeah, let's just get into it. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Hope you guys are watching along with me. I'm not gonna be able to respond to these comments, um, but I'm just gonna watch them. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna press play and I'm probably gonna pause it a lot. So, all right guys, uh, I'm on the thing and it's probably gonna start with a glee cap. So I have the volume on loud so you can hear it and maybe you can pause along with me. Here we go. Three, two, one, bang. So here's what you missed on Glee. Ooh, Punk tried to steal an ATM and got himself stuck in juvie. As far as badasses go, I'm number one. Sam and Quinn are sort of a couple and so are Mike and Tina. Artie and Brittany okay. went out, but then he sort of dumped her and now he sort of wants her back. Kurt's pretty lonely all by himself and so is Coach Beast. Sue okay. keeps trying to get her to quit. She even baked her a batch of cookies. Are those dog poop cookies? And that's what you missed on Glee. Okay, that was, pause. That was really useful because I don't remember any of that. Um, I do know that the voice of the person that says the Glee Caps is one of our writer, creator, producers, uh, Ian Brennan, who we, who we love. Uh, if you guys know, you know he's amazing. That was his voice. This is a trip to hear. It's hard because I have like a light right above here that's, see this? That's bouncing off of my picture of James Dean peeing in someone's bathroom, maybe his, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm like watching through this light, so it's kind of hard for me to watch, but all right, let's go, play. I should probably just be watching my scenes, right? But I guess, uh-oh, Cord's taking his shirt off. Good old Cord, Dude, taking his shirt off. How do you stand that cold time? He needs to cold shower with Danny Quinn. Oh, that's right, because because Cord's character was dating Quinn, right? Yeah. And she's not. A little something, something. Right. A little something, something always leads to something more. A little I've something, been there, something remember. always leads to something when more. When the prom came, Queen, it'll feel just as good as a little something. I like totally forgot that in there, dude, they were together actually, at some point on the show. Still there now. How do we find the only two girls in high school that won't put out? <laughs> what do you do though? Oh, easy. I just think about the opposite of what I'm doing. Oh, yeah. God, this is so crazy to watch. Okay, so... Corey's making a video. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Never actually almost killed a civil servant before. <laughs> well, you have to find something to be your own buzzkill. You know, something that is... Totally not hot. I don't care! If you're on this football team, you'll wear a cup! Oh, you Coach Beast is in this. This is great. Up, right up your you think down with that helmet? You think the Nutcracker's just a musical? This is you such a silly show. Like oh, man. man. Yes, you did. I'm, al I'm already debating if this is like a nutty idea to do the whole episode. Maybe I should just go through my stuff. But I want to... No, no, here we go. Okay. Chris and Jenner here. Oh no, Karofsky's being a bully. Okay. Yeah, fine. Right, because they had just, they had kissed. He kissed him, that's right, this, uh, this is all coming all back right, to me. All right guys, let's get down to business. Okay, right. First, let's welcome back Noah Buckerman. Welcome back Noah, Buckerman is back. I don't know where he was. I hope your time in Juvie has taught you a lesson or two. Oh, he's in Juvie, home. good, next edition. Thank you, Glee Writers. I ruled that place. All I did was crack skulls and lift weights all day. Wow, what a catch. I can't believe I ever let you go. And now, drum roll fit. Because I have in my hand our competition for sectionals next month. Sectionals. First, the acapella Not regional, the sectionals. Boys private school in Westerville, the Dalton Academy Warbler. Uh-oh. Yeah. First uh, mention of the Warblers. Uh, Pause. Uh, you catch that? We're barely three minutes in. They mentioned the Dalton Academy Warblers. This is exciting. If you're watching this with me, I'm really sorry. I've never done this before. I, there's no like window here where you can watch the episode. So the majority of the time where I'm just like looking at the screen like an idiot, you're just gonna have to deal with. I do apologize. Thank you for joining me. I hope this is fun. And I hope you're at least watching the show. Once we get to my shit, I'm, there's, there's a lot to talk about, but here we go. An awesome gay jokes just popped into my head. And the other team to beat 
The Hipsters, a first-year club from the Warren Township Continuing Education Program. Now, they are a glee club composed right. entirely of elderly people getting their high school GEDs. Is that legal? How are we supposed to compete That's against right. a bunch of adorable old people? They can kidding? compete Real against bones. the elderly. Old ladies, a good luck pat on the rear, it'll shatter her pelvis. Moving on. Since it seemed to get you guys jazzed about sectionals right, last year, I want to make this week our second annual Boys vs. Girls Tournament. Uh-oh, okay, okay. Okay. So, split up into two groups and uh, figure out what songs you're going to sing. Alright, what are they going to sing, guys? Excuse me while I fix my hair. Say it again. I don't Boys know. team. Okay, how about you put your Alright. Dude, Mr. Shu, wake up. You can join whatever team he wants. It was a different time. I know it's not my place to ask, but can you push me down the back staircase? My injury should be the same, but it's more likely populated, so the humiliation won't be as bad. Relax, I'm gonna take care of you. You're my boy now. I don't understand. <laughs> I got out of Juvie early because I agreed to do community service. But I think I'm trash one. Oh, good. Good exposition. Now, so I now I know. That's now I know why he's helping. I know a cripple that needed some help, and you went for it. I'm your community service. There's no way I'm going back to Juvie. There's no chicks. Yeah, don't patronize no him. Just that community place. service. Cool. So we're like friends. Well, slow down it's not beer, it's kombucha. I should have grabbed a beer though. If you're drinking, cheers. Right cheers. I know we got people from all over the world watching. Thanks for watching. Ah, Karofsky! What is your problem? Yes, what is your problem, you bro? Back to me? You want a piece of the fury? The fury? That's what I named my fist. Oh, with that level of creativity, you could easily become assistant manager. Right? <laughs> I'm gonna oh, pause that. that. I'm gonna pause that. <laughs> That's what I need my fist. It's funny for a variety of reasons. Obviously, this is very serious, and, and he's a very threatening force, and the entire homophobic thing is obviously evil, and he's meant to be, you know, the antagonist in this situation. What's funny to me is that um, I've known Max Adler for a long time, and I'll talk about Max uh, later in the episode once our scene comes up. Fuck it, I'll talk about him now. Uh, Max is such a dear, dear man. He's, a, he's such a sweet dude. And oftentimes when you're an actor, uh, you make these, you, you become friends with people and you have these relationships with them that, uh, that outweigh, like the amount of time you spend with somebody in, on an interpersonal level is, is in the majority. And the time that you spend with them as them playing a character is in the minority. So, and not the person they actually are. Oh, Max is here. Max, I love you. I'm so bad with Instagram. If I include you in on this, I'm going to screw it up. So I apologize. I'll call you after this though, but I have lots of nice things to say about Max. Um, so anyway, I, I just got a text. Sorry, that's why I got all screwy on this thing. But uh, so Max is such a lovely guy that when I see this, I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. He was the bully. He was the bully. And obviously we would continue to have more things uh, on screen during this show, but off screen as well. It's always been a, a good pal and I, I love him dearly. So shout out to you, Max, you're a wonderful man. To reinforce this wonderful story, my first day on set on Glee, um, because those of you who aren't familiar with the way shooting uh, a series works, you shoot out of order. So you don't necessarily see what happens in chronological order. My first day on set, uh, even though this is the anniversary of the episode airing, I shot this in like early October. My first day on set was I think the last scene that I have in this episode with Chris and Max. And I remember getting in hair and makeup and the first person I met from the Glee set was Max Adler. And uh, we rode in the van together and just had a lovely chat. Uh, I believe The Social Network had just come out and being that we're both cinephiles, we talked about The Social Network and I think of them every time I see uh, that movie floating around somewhere because uh, that was our, it was around, you know, it was fall, it was like awards movie season. So we were talking about movies and just had a great chat and uh, really just hit it off and got on like a house on fire and it, we've been pals ever since. But Max was truly one of the first people and uh, for that reason he's always held a special place in my heart. So given all that love and admiration for my dear buddy Max Adler, it's funny when you contextualize that with, that's what I need my fists! <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Even though this is a very serious moment. Okay, we're gonna go back to the serious moment. He's a meanie. He hasn't been very nice to, to, to Kurt Hummel. I'm pressing play. Here we go. I find out it's bad. The Fury's gonna find you. Whoa. Not cool, bro. God. This is torturing the boy, Kurt. 
Hey, check this out. I just paused it. My name is right under Max's. That's awesome. What an honor. My first billing. Max Adler, Jerry, and Chris. How very fitting. I never noticed that before. Very cool. What? Yeah. This is my hill to climb alone. My hill to climb alone. I'll be honest. I think it's getting to you. Usually this stuff rolls right off your back. But lately you've been belligerent, angry, pushing people away. Can I be honest with you? You, like everyone else at this school, are too quick to let homophobia slide. Ooh. And your lesson plans are boring and repetitive. Yeah, and call them out, man. That doesn't challenge any of us. You mean because I didn't let you join the girls like you wanted? <sighs> to answer your question, yes, I'm an ass. Oh, good. I'm and glad yes, they came around. The only I forgot. out gay kid at the school gets me down. But most of all, I'm not challenged in the least here. Oh, what does that mean? Does that mean he's going to go somewhere well, where he does feel challenged? Maybe I with the bathwater here. I've totally done that. <laughs> We're just making an adjustment. Boys, you Man. Songs traditionally sung by Heather girls. was so fucking girls, good on this show. Try some classic rock. Uh, the Who, The Stones. The more opposite your choice, the more points you get. Okay. Don't like worry, gentlemen. I have this one under control. Now, obviously for this medley to work, I'm going to have to sing lead. And, of course, when you're singing Diana Ross, Bob and Mackie, yes, Marabou for their bows are a must. Isn't this lesson about opposites? I mean, you and Stephen Gavin and Heather Bowie is I'm just exactly watching what you'd expect. Okay, who said anything about a gown? Uh, dude, why don't you make yourself useful and go put some rat poison in them old folks' jello or... Is it the garglers? The warblers. Whatever. <laughs> you can wear all the feathers you want. <laughs> the garglers. <laughs> I never got that before. That's great. Fine. <laughs> oh, man. God, there's some zingers in this show. I know it goes all over the place a lot of times, but man, when it zings, it zings. When it sings, it sings. And when it's got heart, it's got real heart, man. God, Cord's making out with Diana. What's going on? Oh man, look at Coach Beast hacking away at that meat. Yikes. Oh, Dot, what a lovely, lovely woman. Ugh. Again, also very kind of... I said, say my name. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> she was such a trooper during this whole thing. Are you okay? What yeah. a wonderful human being. It is very hard. Dot Marie Jones. Okay. I know what I heard. There we were making out and he said it. Beast. I think I forgot this was like a plot line. One of the most horrific oh, Jane. image I can imagine. Coach, I need help. I've done everything I can to rehabilitate my image. I'm getting straight A's, dating the cutest oh, guy at school. You would rather be dry humping She-Hulk. Oh, dear God. Why did I say that? Now that's what I'm picturing. You know what kind of <laughs> disgusting images I'm going to have to look at to get this out of my head? Oh, I'm man. I'm straight to the wound care center. I'm going to have to stare at some wounds. Which I really, really forgot what, what I was really getting into when I Wait. watched this whole episode. This may be the opportunity I've been waiting How for. How are we doing, guys? Are we doing okay? Are we to get Beast out of the school? And your Macaulay Culkin stuffed up I hope back you're doing in right. your arms. What I hope you can hear this. We need to Give me some thumbs up if you can hear the sound. If, we're, if, we're, if you're watching this, this with me, let me see some thumbs up. the next Mary Kay Letourneau. And you need to give him a piece of your mind. Loud and in public. Show him who's the boss. Oh, man. Jane now Lynch, I'm picturing amazing. the two of them making out during an episode of Who's the Boss. <laughs> oh, I see guitar. I see some music. One thing I learned in Judy. Cash is king. All right, let's make that let's musical transition. Free. You think people are going to pay us to sing? I don't think busking is... A I don't think busking is going to work. You're dead wrong, Artie. That's all we do in Glee World. This is so badass. Oh. I've never broken the rules like this. Breaking the rules by singing out in, in a public place in your school. Why Real renegades. Not? Yeah, I forgot about this one. Mark was a great musician. I loved when he had a chance to play guitar and show that off. That was always nice. Oh, got the words wrong. Alright, I might make this a trio. There we go. Josh, look at it. That's great. Right. One of Glee's finest traditions, getting everybody involved very quick. Everybody loves it. 
Yeah, guys just have steel drums at the ready. Chorus. Have my guitar with me. Damn it. Should I grab it? I think I'm gonna have to. Alright, I'm doing it. I'm grabbing it. I don't care. I'm grabbing it. I can't help myself. Yeah, that's right. I realize that I'm live to however many thousands of people. So. Alright, let's see if we can find it. It's probably out of tune. Again, I did not prepare for this. Okay, let's, let's hear it. Let's hear it, guys. Keep going. It was worth it for the last chord. There we go. That last triad. That was nice. And see, the school likes it. You're like, how are they nerds? How are they not liked? Clearly, everybody likes them at school. I can't. It's about 300 bucks. What are we gonna do with it? Buy a buttload of clove cigarettes, and I don't know. Buy a buttload of clove cigarettes. That sounds like you want it? the worst idea ever. You don't need any cash for that. She's free. She was my first. Oh, that's right. They were together. Uh, I, think I forgot I how much back. sex is in the show. It's she very really, scandalous. It's simple. I was kind of mean to her when I blew her off. This is perfect. The thing about chicks is you only have to be a fraction as nice to them as you are mean to them to get them to like you again. So what do we do? Here's a little community <laughs> service to my answer. You and I are gonna take this dough and go on a double date with Santana and Rooney to the sticks. Whoa. Yeah. Best community service. Totally ever, forgot right? that that was a thing. Okay. Whoa, okay, here we go. We're we're Dalton. Here we go. It's happening. Here we go. Look at this building. This place. Whoa! Pause! I just came on screen. I just came on screen. I'm on the screen now. That's me. Um, wow. Look at that hairdo. Um, I've paused it, obviously. Um, this building was so beautiful to go to. And by the way, so this was, I, I had already shot everything else. I actually, I don't fucking remember. I, but I think we had already shot the song and we'd done that Karofsky scene. So at this point I'd spent like a little bit of time with Chris. So I think it was a little more comfortable, but you have to understand at the time, like I, I didn't really watch much of Glee when the show was huge, but I, you had to have lived under a rock not to be aware of its presence. Like it was on every magazine, it was on billboards. And you know, like I follow pop culture, so I was aware of its like impact. And I was really aware of, of Chris Colfer and I was aware of uh, the, what his character meant to so many young people, particularly queer young people. Um, but not even just young folks, just the queer community at large. It was a really amazing character to be on a mainstream television that was doing so well. Um, and I was totally aware of the episode where he came out. That was a big one. Um, and it was, I remember this because it was after, like Leon was on at nine or eight or something. And my <laughs> now over show, my first TV show Eastwick was on on ABC like an hour before it. So I would, you know, watch those episodes on TV and then afterwards flip over to that show Glee that was doing much better than our show that didn't last more than a couple of few episodes. <laughs> And I would watch this and be like, wow, this, this is, being on this show would be great. Like, these guys are doing fantastic. And I happened to, my first Glee episode, I think, after the pilot was, was probably that, that big episode. So I was really aware of how important this was. And I, I was fully aware of, of the reaction of being able to be a character alongside him. And if anybody, my tenure on Glee, I absolutely owe to people's embracing of the character of Kurt Hummel. I'm absolutely riding on his coattails. Um, had I been another part, I don't know if people would have taken as much of a liking. So my hat's off to uh, the character of Kurt Hummel, the actor of Chris Colfer, and of all the fans that have been so supportive of his thing. So this to me was like such a really cool moment. Um, I knew that it was, a, it was like a cool thing to be a part of. I was very much aware of it, and I was really hoping I, didn't, I wouldn't fuck it up. Um, just look at that hairdo. More on the hairdo later. I'm gonna press play. My name's Blake. Why are you So what exactly is going on? Neat cute. Every now and then they throw an impromptu performance in the senior commons. It tends to shut the school down for a while. 
It tends to shut the school down. Didn't it just shut down? It was kind of cool. The Kinley too. The Warblers are like rock stars. The Warblers are like rock stars. (laughs) I would know. I'm the basically dictator of the the group. I shouldn't use that word. Uh, The main front man, I should have said. Oh, look at this little slow-mo shot. Okay, pausing. Um, So at this point, Blaine has grabbed Kurt's hand. A little forward, if you ask me. It's a bold move. Grabbing anybody's hand. Um, That's just a bold, bold move. Um, But hey, it was cute. It was cute. It's TV. But, um, (laughs) yeah, literally grabs him by the hand. And they walk down the slow-mo hallway, um, which had another name that I like to call. But I don't know if it's, it's, it's said with love. Um, But I don't want people to misconstrue it as something mean. Maybe another time. You can ask me in person what, what I called it. The, 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 the hallway, the slow-mo hallway. See if you have ideas. But it was like a fun nickname we gave it because there was a lot of slow-mo in that hallway. Just a lot of slow-mo running up and down. You can take, I'm looking forward to seeing the conspiracy theories on this from all you uh, internet kids. I'm looking at you, Tumblr, holding out strong. Um, okay, so I'm grabbing, Blaine is grabbing his hands and he's running down the, the hallway. Bold move from Blaine Anderson. At the time, didn't have the last name Anderson. That would come later. A little piano music. Okay, here it comes. Teenage Dream. God, I haven't watched this in ages. Oh, I stick out like a sore thumb. Well, next time, don't forget your jacket, new kid. It'll fit right in. What a sh- oh, excuse me. Smoothie. Before you met me, <laughs> oh man, okay, I'm pausing it. So much to say about this. Um, first of all, this was such a blast. I think I'm gonna have to get into this more in that concert that I was talking about because there is just so much to say. Um, yeah, look at all the guys who would end up being on tour with me. I mean, we had a lot of fun. Um, where to start? Uh, I Look, Man, that looks so tiny. It's so funny. I mean, look, I'm not like a super tall guy, but I'm not super short either. I'm like right in between. And I'm not, I, I have no problems with it. But I remember specifically when we had our first rehearsal for this, I was like, they just had to pick a bunch of tall guys. I was like, of course, you just had to do that. I've always been perfectly comfortable with my height. I have no issues with it. But I was like, this, it's like you made a conscious effort to make me look as tiny as possible. Hey, I don't care. I still got to do this and had a great time. So I don't mind. But particularly... <laughs> As I'm looking at John Hall, aka Meatbox, Mr. Beatboxer. John's a rather large fellow. He's a he's a he's a fo- ex football dude. God love him. Beautiful singer. Great songwriter too. Check his check his stuff out online. Um, but uh, yeah, I just remember the first thing that happens. They he like Blaine is there, then he's like, "Come watch this song," and then he slowly becomes smaller and smaller. <laughs> Again, I think it's all part of the fun and the charm. Um, gosh. I'm just gonna watch it. I, I like my brain is queuing up with too many thoughts and feelings about this moment. I'm just gonna press play. Arrangement was killer on this, man. Just love. We can dance until we die. You and I. We'll be young forever. You make me feel like I'm living a teenage dream. The way you turn me on, I can't sleep. Let's run away. Don't, don't ever look back. Don't ever look. Let's go all the way tonight. No regrets. Just love. We can dance until we die. Pausing it. What a trip. I'm kind of playing guitar to kind of distract me from this. Uh, yeah, it's wild. This was so much fun. I, uh, okay, where do I even begin? Um, so we, all the singers that were cast were actual singers, but we were all lip syncing. 
Um, I, my brain is escaping. Can you guys help me out, the fans out there, just because I'm sort of frazzled right now? It's the, uh, the original acapella group. Oh, they're gonna kill me. I usually know this off the top of my head. I just, it's been a while. The acapella group who originally did this. Do you guys know? I can look this up online so I don't make a f damn fool of myself more than I already have. Um, the original, original acapella group of the Warblers were the, if anybody says it first, they'll shout you out. Um, who's gonna say, who's gonna say, who's, it's not the, <laughs> the Wiffle Toots? No, but good guess. Um, it was, do, 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 do. Ah, Tufts University, the Beelzebubs, Beelzebubs, which is a very classic, um, you know, East Coast uh, acapella all male group. Um, this is all stuff that I talked about 10 years ago. Probably some of you are too young to even remember this, but the Beelzebubs are the real. Um... So anyway, the Beelzebubs did the arrangement for this and they have done a whole bunch of amazing versions of songs and uh, the Warblers were based on the Beelzebubs. So huge shout out to them uh, and all the arrangements that they did for the Warblers. And I, um, yeah, I never really got to interact with them very much, but if you go to Tufts or your friends that go to Tufts University, Beelzebubs is like, they're, they're a thing and they are the OG Warblers. So uh, the guys that they cast obviously were not in the Beelzebubs because the Beelzebubs were students while well, these guys were actors in Los Angeles. Um, and I thought they just cast like, you know, young looking guys to be in the Warblers. But the truth is they're all like singers and really good ones too. Um, because of the way this acapella recording is made, it's, it's almost impossible to make it sound the way that it does here simply because of a lot of the vocal manipulation that's involved, the way the vocals are stacked. If you know anything about music production, it'd be really hard to do it. But on the day, I remember trying to sing the arrangement out with a lot of these guys. And we got pretty close. Obviously, it'll sound different because this is highly processed. It's on a TV show. But um, that was one thing that was a bummer. I was like, these guys are really great singers. And of course, we're all sort of other than, you know, me lip syncing to my own voice. They're lip syncing, um, but on the day they were kind of singing the oohs and the ahs and it sounded great. There's a lot of great singers in there that a lot of you might be familiar with now uh, with their own careers that you could go check out online. Um, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's the Beelzebubs, giving them due, due credit to a very, very, very cool um, arrangement. Yeah, the, the reverb on that, the swells and everything, the way that the beatbox is mixed. So fun. Ah. Pausing, pausing, so much fun. I remember when this came out, there was like a meme or a gif. I forget, he had a name. The fandom had like a name for him. It was some kid that was just going fucking ape shit next to Chris. He was just like all about the warblers. And I, I don't know the actor's name, um, but it was like a thing. <laughs> I've seen it come up in gifs, especially about 10 years ago. It was awesome. That's why I really appreciate the internet community of just making these fun, noticing these things. Um, yeah, these guys just love the Warblers. It's crazy. Um, I, I, my brain is like I, frying. I have so many thoughts about this. The reason why I was talking about how these guys are all singers is because none of us are really dancers. I'm definitely not a dancer. I'm like a somewhat athletic person. And I think I have pretty good rhythm, but like I, it, it takes a while for me to understand like choreography it really does um and a lot of the choreography on the show that i do is is pretty fundamental and the camera's doing a lot of the work right we're staying here in the face and reacting and acting but a lot of my stuff is like not great and i remember this there was like a turn thing that i just i couldn't do for the life of me and i remember when i watched this final edit i was like wow they made me look a lot better than i remember being and i have a video that i will share on uh the dec decade concert of this rehearsal video, and it is a fucking joke. It is the clunkiest, most unsexy. We're all in like our gym shorts and like doing really clunky step touches that we can't really hit. Um, and it's adorable and it looks so 
stupid. And Zach Woodley, who was our choreographer, I'm sure was just like, this will never, ever work. Um, because it looks so dumb. And I'm definitely, uh, you know, guilty of that too. It looks so stupid. And talk about looking tiny. It, it, you, you'll see it, you'll love it. I shouldn't even show it to you because I'm trying to look somewhat cool. But um, it's, uh, it's really embarrassing. So uh, this turned out a lot better <laughs> than, uh, than, it, than it looked from the start. And uh, watching this always brings up great memories. There's, um, I'll talk about the recording of the song next time, but uh, it was one of the rare opportunities that I had to, I, I didn't record this with the Anders, uh, who were the, the main music producers of the show. I recorded this with a different uh, gentleman who was associated with the Beelzebubs, and I got to comp my own vocals, not on the buttons, but I got to kind of, we spent an entire night on this, on this song. Um, ordinarily during Glee, because things have to move fast, you spend like, you just, you're in and out of the booth. This, because they had nothing else to work on other than the song, was a full day's vocal, which is, you know, not something you, you would usually do on a show with this fast of a turnaround. And that was a really special experience. And uh, I think that sort of extra TLC, for whatever reason, for better or for worse, I think paid off. And that's kind of one of the magical things about the song. Um, People have told me that they prefer this version to the real version. I vehemently disagree. <laughs> I love the original Katy Perry version. I love the song. And I was so glad that I got to sing this. And this is one of those lightning in the bottle moments that I think has less to do with me and more to do with the sort of magical unpredictability of all those other factors I talked about. This moment with, with Kurt's character, with Chris's character as Kurt Hummel, with the introduction of this new guy, and everything, everything about it. So much fun. I mean, I could rewatch this a million times and tell you a different story every time. There's, there's a lot to say. Um, but that was Teenage Dream. Let's, uh, let's press play. What, what kind of like a dick move though? He's like, yeah, 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 they're great. Come on, come on, come on. Watch me do this thing. And like give no introduction at all of like, I'm actually in it. Do you want to go see me do the show? Like nothing. Just all mystery. I know it's like slick, but it was like, I'd be a little, I'd be a little blindsided. I'd be like, bro, at least tell me you're going to perform. I, I just, I didn't know. That's making out under the stars. Ooh, that's right. Oh my gosh, that my very own situation. Mike Chang, all together. This is so weird when you know these well, people personally. And you're watching them make out, and you're like, what? You should probably cool off. Oh, man. I'm so turned on right now. <laughs> Why do you have to keep throwing a Coach Beast? Poor Dot. Beast. <laughs> what did you say? The Nothing. fact that this is a thrill light is so silly. I gotta go. I'll see you in the club. All right. It's all, we've almost been just on here for 40 be minutes. Just with me. I won't get mad at you if you tell me the truth. Will anybody be mad if I just really? go because through it looks like you're gonna be mad to my stuff? Or should we just keep going? While you were kissing me. Look, keep going as is, give me this. Skip to my scenes, give me this. Clearly, like women who give you a hard time. I'm not cheating on you with my football coach. We talk about this in private. Why am I embarrassed? I'm keeping an eye on you. But I think it's better. I don't know. No one's giving me an answer, so I don't know what to do. Wherever you can, including the locker room with the beast. What's this? This is a lover's oh. quarrel, and it's your fault. Just keep going. I'm gonna keep going. All right. Thing, you, you crap on my leg, I'll cut it off. Crap on my I'll leg, and I'll cut it off. Wow. Crap on my leg, and I'll hey, cut man. it off. Maybe this is a more fun way to do. What the hell's going on around here? What's going on, Sam? What's going on, Sam? He's been talking about beast during sex How many of you guys have done this? All the guys whose girlfriends won't put out. It's the girls, too. This is really bad, guys. What, what if Coach Beast were to find out about it? Think about how hurt she'd be. It's not personal. Of course it's personal. Look, Coach Beast is like us, like Glee Club. She's an outsider at this school. No one appreciates her or her talent because they've decided that she's too different. And for you guys to abuse that, even in private, is the opposite of everything we're trying to achieve in here. But we're just thinking about it. It's not like we're actually, you know, making fun of her to her face. I need you Yeah, to but don't, stop. like, say the name Spread the words to all the other guys kind of and weird. girls. This ends here and now. Oh, people are, like, like skipping. Never know people this. are bored. I'm kind of conflicted. Because I want to watch scenes. This is Wes. Oh, here we go. Back to this. All right. Pausing us. It's very sick. I'm pausing. Pausing. Okay, we're back to the Warblows. It's here. It's here. Okay, here we go. Lies for you to invite me for coffee before you beat me up for spying. 
We are not going to beat you up. We're not going to beat you up. Telly Long, ladies and gentlemen, a.k.a. Aladdin, if you're a Broadway fan. Um, I, I could rattle off all of Telly's Broadway accomplishments, but a uh, very talented man in his own right. It's nice to see his beautiful face again. A spy, we thought it was sort of endearing. Titus as well. Think that spy Fun little wasn't really resume of his own. Can I ask you guys a question? Are you guys all gay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Fair no. question. I mean, I am, but uh, these two have girlfriends. This is not a gay school. We just have a zero tolerance harassment policy. Everybody gets treated the same. I'm pausing this. I'm pausing this. What a like a utopian little school. Like a mate. Like very cool. When I, I remember reading this, going like, oh wow, this is like very impressive. Very impressive boys' school that they all have this very progressive way of thinking. Um, what was I going to say? Um, oh, fuck. I don't remember. I don't remember. Oh, I think I think I had... had I shot... The, I don't remember for sure, but who cares? My memory's flexible. I did... We shot Teenage Dream, like, in the morning, which was, like, a big... Like, I was sweating bullets, you know, that whole morning because that was, like, shooting my musical number on Glee. And then this was afterwards, which was, like, the big scene, you know? Um, with Chris. So it was like a huge day. I remember being really nervous, but I was really glad I could just like sit down for this. Um, and this, I think I have a mini monologue was my, this whole scene was my audition for Glee. I talked earlier about the audition that I had for the show. This was the scene. I wonder if they'll let me get my hands on that. Maybe I can play it during decade. I don't know. I'll try, but here we go. I'm pressing play. It's pretty simple. So it's really simple. We have a zero policy, a zero tolerance uh, sort of us. bullying. Would you guys excuse us? Take these cards. Right. Yeah, this was the scene that I had to do, the, do for my audition. I remember it now. I take it you're having trouble with school. I'm the only person out of the closet at my school. And I, I, I try to stay strong about it. There's this Neanderthal who's made it his mission to make my life a living hell. But nobody seems to notice. I know how you feel. I got taunted at my old school and it really pissed me off. Pausing. What? I don't remember. Does it, did he go to, I forget. Do we know what school he went to? Was that ever mentioned in the course of Glee? Because... If he's a sophomore now, then he transferred three, three, I just realized, he would have transferred to three schools during his whole time in high school. Interesting. I don't know if it gets mentioned. Maybe there's an answer for that. I don't, I don't remember. So, okay, great. So I'm pressing play. I even complained about it to the faculty and they're sympathetic and all, but you could just tell that nobody really cared. It was like, hey, if you're gay, your life's just gonna be miserable. Boo. Sorry. Nothing we can do about it. Fuck that, bro. So I left. I came here. Yeah, get out of there. Simple as that. So you have two options. I mean, I'd love to tell you to just come and roll here, but tuition at Dalton's sort of steep, and I, I know that's not an option for everybody. Or you can refuse to be the victim. Prejudice is just ignorance, Kurt. It's true. And you have a chance right now to teach him. How? Easier said than done. Call him out. I ran, Kurt. I didn't stand up. I let bullies chase me away, and it is something that I really, really regret. That's a big. That's a big plot point. The boys beat us a I don't even remember if we ever explored that, but that's a nice little character nugget that he had this regret in his life. Um, interesting. Um, yeah, easier said than done to confront. For those of you that have done that in your life, good on you. So to stand up to boys, that's, that's, that's tough. Um, yeah. The show came out at a really good time, I think. It's amazing that a lot of the stuff that's happening in this show, a lot of the messaging was like, somewhat normalized now. I think a lot of Gen Z kids would probably look at this and be like, ugh, 
like they were so behind and but at the time you know we were this was you know I, I'm not taking credit for I, I was just an actor on it but a lot of things they did really nice last time you competed against them we've got to bring the noise hard this time to be fair they okay didn't so here's you. here's what we've got like 20 more minutes and I have a feeling people I saw a lot of this so I'm just gonna kind of scrub through the episodes and just see what's going on um because I don't know if I'm in very much more. Um, I'm just going to spend the time talking about Blaine's hair is what I'm going to talk about. Um, and then I'll skip to this final scene. Um, and if you guys are okay with that, uh, that's what we're going to talk about. So um, I'm up until I started working on camera somewhat regularly, uh, I, didn't, I didn't really know much about like hair. Some people are really like hair people. I always had long hair, right? And the big story for me, you know, there's an old adage about Hollywood, like, it's kind of like an old joke, you know, like, change the name, get a haircut, and get a job in show business. Um, you know, my name was Darren Everett Chris, and then through a series of strange circumstances, it became Darren Chris, and then I literally got a haircut and got a job in show business. Um, because the big hair was kind of like, I was playing these kind of character-y, nerdy, you know, um, like, I guess pothead slash nerdy hippie surfer roles because that's what you get when you have long hair and so when I got this audition um I hadn't had a haircut in a long time and I was looking for like a real change and I promised myself that okay if I got it then uh amazing and then I would say I did it I got it because of the haircut and if I didn't get the part um I'd be I would just tell people oh I was just looking for a change so I got the haircut and the rest is history because the uh, and maybe I'll try and bring up the email during the show that I keep alluding to but there was a thing that said um, think a young Tom Ford. And if you know who Tom Ford is, I looked him up and I was like, okay, cool. I definitely can't have long hair for this. I got to look a lot more like, you know, preppy and like put together. So, uh, so I had that. And when I walked in, because I, they were trying to do, uh, figure out the look for, for Blaine and they wanted it to be a slicked back kind of like Mad Men look, which was also very popular at the time. And uh, shout out to my man, Sturfon Demings, who was the first person to ever do hair for Blaine it was less of this gelled look, which is what it turned into, and more of this like coiffed uh, thing, because I have curly hair, and it was more like a straight thing, and the first couple episodes, especially in Teenage Dream, I loved Blaine's hair then. I thought it was great. Um, but here's the thing about idiots that don't know th a thing about hair. The combination of me not knowing how to like communicate what to do with my hair, and me just honestly trying to be as least invasive as possible on set, I'd go on set every day, and I had a different hair person. Like, throughout many years, I probably went through maybe six or seven, because people would just, different person would do my hair a lot of the time. Um, I would just say, eh, just make me look like whatever. I don't care, like, well, is there a certain way? I'm like, I think they part it this way, but I don't really care. I don't, like, I just, just make me not look like me. That was kind of my main uh, MO. I was like, just don't, I want to look like a different character, because I was such an actor. I really wanted to, like, transform myself. So I, I really wanted to, to, to me, the hair was a way in to be a different person because I, you know, Blaine and I are not very similar, despite what some of you might believe. If you believe that to be true, then I have done fucking fooled you um, because, uh, yeah, we're, we're just different. So I really wanted to have like a, a way to identify with that. And I chose to do the hair. So throughout the many seasons of Glee, there were very, there were variances where sometimes it's like, I was like slicked back or, and I look at it now where I'm like, ah, oh, man, what was I thinking? I should have spoke up for myself. So a little lesson to you young folks that might be in uh, theater or film and you really want your hair to be a certain way. It's okay to speak up for yourself. Those people are there to, to, you know, obviously with a grain of salt, you want it to match the vision of the show. But um, I was so uh, compliant because I was like, yeah, whatever, I don't care. Like, because I wanted to be cool and not like a pain in anyone's ass because I was like the new guy. And I did that for like five or six, five years. Um, I should have at some point been like, I really liked it when it was like coiffed, when Sturfon did it. Um, so that's not to throw any of the hair people that did my hair under the bus. Uh, they all did a wonderful job. I just never spoke up for myself and I didn't realize how much I preferred one look to the other. And I'm saying this to people because a lot of the time people will show me Blaine hair photos and be like, why does it look so weird? I'm like, it, honestly, that was my, my, my bad. I didn't, I didn't speak up for myself um, because it is different. And then when you sweat, because I have curly hair, when I'm dancing around, you sweat and it curls up. So, but that's how, everybody, that's real life, man. That's what hair is like. That's the thing. Everybody's hair is different. It doesn't always stay the same. Like even the fact that 
the, the amount of sameness that Blaine's hair stayed throughout the show is still relatively unrealistic, considering that, like, people grow it out, people do different things. So what are you going to do? But that's the Blaine hair story. I remember showing up. I said Mad Men and Sturfan made it awesome. I loved it. And then from there on out, I just stopped thinking about it. And it's not until I watch it now where I go, wow, it's, it could have been a lot more to my liking. So it, it could have been a little more flattering. But I didn't want to keep the curly hair. I wanted it to be different. Um... Okay, cool, that's, that's the silly hair story. Um, I think I show up again once, and it's that first scene. Oh, they do living on a prayer? Fuck, okay, I've already scrubbed through this too long. We're gonna be here way too long, guys. I only wanted to make this an hour, um, but it looks like the girls, they, I'm trying to figure what happens here. So they go to Breadsticks, the girls sing living on a prayer. It's probably kick-ass, because all the numbers in the show are fucking fun to watch. Um, I'm going to watch this, um, the, oh, this is confrontation. That This is an extension of our scene. Um, okay. So now I'm at like 29 minutes of the show. Okay. I'm just moving around. Okay. So this is Kurt. He's walking down the hall. He's looking at his phone. Oh, and Blaine sent him a text that says courage. And then Karofsky's a dick and just pushed him. Bro, that's his phone. Fucking, what, what an asshole. Hey! He's gonna call him out. I am talking to you! Girls' locker room's next door. What is your problem? Excuse me? What are you so Oh, wait, this is when they kiss. Are sneaking in here to peek at my junk? Oh, yeah, every stray guy is nightmare. I forgot! The Ruskies are secretly out to molest and convert you. Well, guess what, Hamhawk? You're not my type. Yeah. Okay. Yes. You tell him. I don't do the chubby boys who sweat too much and are going to be bald by the time they're 30. Do not push me, homo. You're going to hit me? Do it. Don't push me. Don't hit me because it's not going to change who what I am. This scene. This is a intense scene. You can't punch the gay out of me anymore than I can punch the ignoramus out of you. Look out of my face! You are nothing but a scared little boy who can't handle how extraordinarily ordinary you are. Woo! And then he kisses him. Holy shit. Pausing this. Great fucking scene. Great work, both of them. It's a great, just... Fucking awesome scene. I also love, he says, you, uh, what, the, I, you can't punch the gay out of me anymore that I can't punch the ignorant, ignoramus out of you. It's a great line. Uh, I forgot. So this is when they kiss. I, at the beginning of this live stream, I thought this had already taken place. Like I said, I forget the timeline of everything. There's a lot of episodes of Glee. That happens in this episode. Holy shit. That's a big one. That's crazy. And then you go, oh. Big reveal, Karofsky, closet case, angry. Ooh, got a lot of demons. All right, cool. So, pressing play on this scene. This is a crazy fucking scene. Oh, and he goes for number two. He goes for number two and he, and he pushes him away. Oh, then you go, oh, now we get it. Why he's so, oh. Pause, my heart breaks for that, for Karofsky and that. And obviously it breaks for, for Kurt as well, but you're just like, oh, bro. You got so many things fucking tied up in you. Someone just said that Golden Globe was well deserved. Absolutely it was. And I think also Chris would have gotten it for season one. I don't know if he, if, I guess it's all part of the same thing because this was out by the time that, that it happened. But yes, I agree with you. He absolutely did deserve that. Wow, intense. Oh, and then cuts to commercial. Well, I genuinely hope you guys are happy. Okay, I'm because Coach that. Beast has quit. Oh, we're back to Coach Beast. I'm what? pausing it because we skipped through so much. Uh, we skipped through the Glee Club. I'm sorry, guys. I just clearly have so much to say. I don't want to waste everyone's time, and we were almost at an hour. I'm going to wrap this up very soon. Okay, so the Beast thing happens. Uh, they go to the principal's office. I don't know what happens here, but I'm just going to skip to this little confrontation scene. Uh, okay, which is at about... 30, 31 seconds, thir 31 minutes and, and 50 seconds. Um, all right, cool. Uh, pressing play. Don't worry about it. Just let me do the talking. Let me do the talking. Curious. I got your back. Excuse me. Hey, lady boys. Is your boyfriend, Kurt? Kurt and I would like to talk to you about something. I gotta go to class. Kurt told me what he did. It's just awful. Oh, yeah? What an awful dude. What's that? Poor he guy. Me. Tortured. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it seems like you might be a little confused. And that's totally normal. This is a, a very hard thing to come to terms with, and you should just know that you're not alone. 
baby, you're not alone. I have a song called Not Alone for those of you that might know my, my music. And what's crazy when I read this in the script, I like laughed out loud because nobody on the Glee set, nobody in the writer's room, Ryan Murphy, and they, they didn't know anything about my background or Star Kid or like Harry Potter musicals or any of my music. I mean, it's not like an original, I didn't make up the phrase, not alone, but the fact that that was like my leading song that I would play a lot and the fact that I played this character on this show with that as a line is just a, a level of cosmic serendipity, providence that you, you just, you can't write it. It's amazing that that happened. That, that, was, that coincidence was not lost on me when I, when I saw the script the first time. Stop oh. this! Pausing. I th so this was my first scene that I ever shot. I hadn't shot any of the other stuff. I hadn't sung Teenage Dream, like I, with, with the Warblers. I hadn't said, hi, my name's Blaine. We hadn't run through the slow-mo hallway. We hadn't had any of these tender moments yet. This was the first time we ever were together like on set. And uh, I think there was even like a stunt guy that was there to like regulate. Because anytime there's any physical altercation, you have to have the person on set to, to uh, make sure no one's getting hurt, even if it's like a small thing, like a push or because um, he pushed me against the thing and I had to like make sure that I didn't hurt my back or something like that. Um, and same with Chris, where he pushes him away. I think I just remember that now for the first time. Um, pressing play. So he's walking away. Well, he's not coming out anytime soon. <laughs> Pausing that. I remember saying that and really wanting it to land. Uh, I said it a bunch of different ways. And I think when I saw this, I was like, oh, I wish I'd been a little more articulate. You know, spent a lot of time in, in drama school trying to be articulate. And I was like, well, he's not coming out of his You get what I'm saying. But I was like, oh, I feel like I could have been a little, there's takes where I was maybe a little bit more precise with my words. But it lands. It's fun. Pop, play. What's going on? What's going on? What do you mean, what's going on? I'm you so just... upset. Why are you so upset? Wait, pressing play. Pause. What the fuck? What do you mean, why are you so upset? What do you mean, what? You, you, you just got pushed around. This, this is a harrowing experience. Blaine, did you not just see what happened? What do you mean, why are you so upset? Sorry. <laughs> because until yesterday, I had never been kissed. Aww. Or at least on the calendar. That shut me up. Darren and Blaine. Come on. I'll buy you lunch. Aww. This is nice. All right. I'm pausing that. That's, uh, there's more to the episode, but I think that's pretty much all of my stuff. Uh, not because I think mine is the most important, but because I'm just talking about my debut on the show as Blaine. And I think that about wraps it up in this episode. Um, Wow, that was great. That was, it was such an honor to be a part of that, man, because you go, the writing was really great. It was a great introduction to this character. And again, all of Kurt's stuff was so good. And I felt so lucky to be a part of it. It was such a great storyline. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm literally thinking about these things for the first time in, in forever. Um, so yeah, that was fun. Uh, that day is, is special. I think I've told the story before, but for those of you that don't know, um, you know, I was aware that I was going to be on maybe one or maybe just a handful of episodes. I didn't know I would end up being on Glee for as long as I was going to be, but it was sort of poised uh, or, or um, positioned that uh, Blaine might potentially be Kurt's love interest on the show. And because of that, um, you know, it was important for me to, to hopefully get to know Chris a little better and hopefully get him a little more comfortable with me because, you know, Glee was a big thing. And, um, you know, here's this new guy coming in and uh, we were gonna have scenes together. So I wanted to make sure that we could strike up a relationship. And I've always, I've always loved Chris, man. Chris is, um, he's, he, he, he's an old soul. He'll tell you that, anybody will tell you that. Um, he was a great performer. He was very intuitive and very, um, uh, he's, he's just, well, first of all, he's very clever. He's a very smart, funny, witty guy. And wit to me is such a, um, uh, is so indicative of so many other things about people. It's one of my favorite, um, qualities of any person is to be witty and, and Chris certainly has that in spades and so uh to his credit the uh first after this scene I was gonna go see 
Uh, I told I, I was on a show with Alan Cumming who said this, and I think he said he's like this may have been the gayest thing that he's ever heard, and I uh, you know in whatever way you want to take that word, I think we've taken that word back as, as a this is a positive thing now, you know, not in the pejorative that that you know idiots used to use it back in the day. In the real, true, awesome, this was a very wonderfully gay and awesome fucking cool hang. We um, wait, wait for it. I know you're you're waiting to gobble that one up, um, and I'm quoting uh, Alan Cumming by the way. It was a day where I had tickets to go see Sutton Foster. Um, there you go, I, that kind of writes itself. Sutton Foster is a musical theater diva, she's been in a ton of shows, she's amazing. I had tickets to go see her across town in Los Angeles and I had an extra ticket. Uh, my buddy it, it dropped out and I had this, it was, I didn't know what to do with it and it was like an expensive ticket so it was like, I, I told Chris, I was like, look, hey man, it's a shot in the dark, I know we just met but, um, you know, I would love to be able to, you know, take you out and get to know you a little bit. And, and, uh, so we had like a little, uh, little chummy bro date. Um, and, uh, you know, at this time, Chris was extremely recognizable and, you know, he was the famous kid from Glee. Uh, and so this, it was very, very sweet of Chris to accept my invitation to this day. I, I always think that was such a nice thing because he, he was probably like, what are you talking about? Like, uh, I'm good. I'm good, man. But um, he came and we went to go see Sutton Foster. It was a great show. We got some sushi afterwards. And, you know, I didn't know very much about the show. I didn't know much about Glee. I didn't know much about his arc other than the vague things that I said before. So the fact that he um, spent the time with me uh, to get me comfortable with, with the show and answer my questions was, was so sweet. And I'll always be thankful for him for that because especially looking back on how much was going on with the show and his life and, and with the, the, the chaos of, of everything that's happening, that was such a great little moment. And so we got to do that, that this day. So after, after this day of, you know, literally where Blaine's like, let me buy you lunch, bottom dinner, it was nice. And uh, so Chris, you have all my love and respect, always have. And uh, that was a great day and a great moment for me. And this would be the start of uh, a, a crazy wild ride and being part of the Glee family which I feel so, so, always so grateful to be a part of. And you, the Glee family out there that, that have been supportive of the show and supportive of Blaine. Um, clearly I have a lot of thoughts and feelings and I, I, there were so many that I was thinking about. I'm gonna have to try and organize and make a little more concise that I'm gonna do for this show. Again, if you're just joining me, um, today is the 10 year anniversary of my first episode, Never Been Kissed, which we just watched. Um, and in celebration of that, I'm putting together a concert that I'm gonna do later this month um, called Deck Aid, which is my initials and aid because we're raising money for a variety of good causes. We're sorting all the tickets and those specific organizations, the charity organizations out. So if you're interested, you wanna see more of this craziness, hopefully a little more organized, I'll be playing a lot of songs cause during this time, I didn't play many songs. I just kinda of sang along with what was on the TV. But next time, if you come to my concert, I will sing some favorite Glee tunes. Um, so that might happen. Um, I'm gonna sing a whole lot of Glee songs, uh, talk about songs that we didn't get to do, songs that I wish I could have done, a lot of behind the scenes stories and content, a lot of videos and pictures that I have amassed and that I wanna share with you. I'm gonna auction off a lot of fun Glee items that are very personal to me that hopefully we can raise a pretty penny for and just kind of give the Glee back that's been given me to the world because you guys have given me so much joy and so and I have so much to be thankful for and I know Glee has given us as a collective unit uh, a lot to be thankful for. So as the, as the holidays roll around, we wanna be able to um, you know, transform that love for each other into a love for the world and helping people that are in a lot of need. So if you wanna see more of this crazy shenanigans with me live and unfettered, uh, hopefully a little more fettered than this first live stream, but um, yeah, I'm gonna go through a lot of Glee stuff. It's gonna be a whole lot of fun, be a whole lot of achievement, in Principal Figgins' words, achievement. Thank you guys for this wonderful achievement and for being a part of my life. I love you all. I uh, hope you had some fun, hope you learned some things. And uh, for the things that I forgot, I'll include in my concert. On November 28th, Saturday, you can find out more link, uh, more in the link in, in, in my bio or go to darrenchrist.com slash decade, D-E-C-A-I-D. I love you all. Thank you for going on this ride with me for the past 10 years and certainly for the past hour. Um, hugs and kisses to you all, all over the world. Mwah. I will see you guys next time. Bye. Thanks for a great 10 years.